So I got this Ferrari 430 diffuser and I gotta find something to do with it. I have loved these things since the first time I saw one. I bought this with hopes of putting it on the MR2 several months ago and it's finally time and we're gonna do it today. Hey dude, what is that? That is very fancy. Let's see, oh, let's see what this is. Wait, that's like some kind of clothing. Bummer, I thought it was car stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did that? Yeah, that's me on the camera. Did that? Yeah, hey. The Ferrari 430 is much wider than the MR2. And because of that, this diffuser is, well, it's way too big for the car. So the first thing we gotta do is just get this bumper off, see how it's gonna fit onto the bumper, and then try to figure out how it's gonna fit onto the chassis itself. I started just by cutting this little heat shield away and hammering the edge of the frame upward. That gave me a little bit of clearance, but that is only the beginning. Then I got the sawzall out and started cutting off the tow hooks. fits inside of there pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is mount one of these to the back of the bumper, actually to the crash bar, and uh, that will slide up into the diffuser and hold the edge of the diffuser. That way I can mount the bottom of the diffuser. Now I'll mount the top of the diffuser too, but this is just gonna hold it in place. I'm gonna do the bottom mounts first and then I'll do the tops. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So it's time to test fit this diffuser again and you guessed it, I gotta cut more stuff away. I'm gonna follow this process several times. It's gonna feel redundant, but just stick with me. It all makes sense in the end. I needed to make a bracket that would connect the bottom of the diffuser to the car. I wanted to make sure I had a lot of options as far as mounting goes, so I grabbed a piece of angle iron with the holes in it and mounted it to the bottom of the diffuser. The best way to mount this diffuser on the inside portion of the car is going to be to build a mount off of the trunk. Now the trunk is sheet metal so what I'm going to do is sandwich two pieces of angle iron together and that should spread out the weight and the tension across the entire piece of sheet metal and make it strong enough to not, you know, rip out. The L bracket attached to the crash bar needs to reach out a little bit further so the diffuser can really rest on it. So I grabbed some plate that I used to make my chassis mount wing and made a template out of cardboard to transfer to the metal. I cut it out of metal with a jigsaw and threw it onto this L bracket and it really works great.
So because I don't weld yet, I had to build a contraption to hold this thing to the car. I basically just cut up a bunch of different pieces of this angle iron and used bolts, nuts, and lock washers to attach it all together. It actually works really well. I know, it's surprising. The bumper was another game of trial and error, or you could call it put the bumper on and cut a piece off. And I basically decided that it would be easier to take away than to add. With that in mind, I cut little bits of the bumper away at a time until I got where I wanted. But that's how this process kind of works. You just have to take a little bit of time until you get the shape that you want. So I have a video that I excluded from here. You can go watch it if you want to, but I redid this bumper with fiberglass. Now here's the deal, fiberglass and plastic don't like each other, and this was the outcome. Things that I learned last time. One, plastic likes plastic. Okay, so I used fiberglass last time, and once the bumper started flexing and stuff, it didn't want to fit right, um, and it started cracking and things like that. This won't do that. As you can see, it's super flexible. So before building my full-size makeshift paint booth, I had this. This is my $15 drop cloth paint booth, and I used this trick for years to paint stuff, even full cars. Um, it's not the most convenient thing in the world, but it is very cheap. Thank you. 